Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to Kenshi Birth of a Hive, episode 18. If you need to recap the rules and goals, here they are, but you gotta pause because I'm gonna be moving on. Uh, so we're picking up where we left off. Queen is down in the way station, and I'm gonna send her to the hub. Uh, all the other swords of the Queen are currently hovering over their beds, and this is because uh, the beds are only rented for a day. It's a new day. So anyone that needs healing needs to uh, re-queue up and pay the rent again. I'm okay with this. It's a reasonable price. So it looks like uh, Red Rain Thorns, Chez, and Silver Shade are done. Now before I uh, continue any further, I want to pay a little bit of attention back home. Because uh, upon loading, I took a look around and noticed that I had made some uh, mistakes. And I'll own up to them. So first mistake... Green here needs to get off of the arrow bench and start working the uh, the generator because the generator uh, ran out of power and therefore the well ran out of water and therefore the uh, farms ran out of water as well. Um, or rather, the well ran out of power, didn't produce water, whatever. You know what I meant. Um, so it was under bad stewardship. Another thing I'm going to do is add in a second well. Which is another reason why I had green, who is making the crossbow bolts, be repurposed. Because the crossbow bolts take iron plates, and I want to use those iron plates to, uh... Um, I want to use those iron plates to make the well. I think what I'm going to do is take everyone off of engineering except for green. Uh, so that we don't have people grabbing, uh, triplicate sort of materials. Because that ends up happening a lot. Um, let's see, you are going to process materials, Pillar's just standing here sort of waiting, uh, then Jay here is going to be looming on hemp and fabric, and then another thing I'm going to do is to, right now, I'm going to ex export fabrics, uh, or at least mass up a whole lot of them so I can make a decent amount of clothing, and then I'm also going to want to store green fruit. So I'll, I'll lay those out as well. Uh, Jay is queued up to be an engineer. I'm going to get rid of that queue, but also manually control them. So the green fruit barrel will allow us to store green fruit, and then all of these additional uh, fabric boxes will allow us to make, um, make additional fabrics, because we maxed out at 50 already. And what uh, Jay will do is, uh, you know, start making fabrics out of the hemp. And uh, then we'll have a great big surplus of fabrics, which will allow us to make armor, clothing, stuff like that. So right now, Meat Pants is waiting on water from these wells so it will help to have two wells pumping out water and then we should have a nice surplus of water um, soon another thing I could do is to pull water out of the, uh, the oven here uh, because there's a lot of farms that are uh, thirsty and um, I feel bad because I was doing so much combat uh, last episode that I wasn't really able to pay sufficient attention to any of these um, any of those uh, home buildings. Alright, so all the building materials are now plopped into this well. And in a minute, we'll have two wells pumping out uh, water. Now, these wells, there there is higher well tech that I can eventually unlock. Uh, and it's also raining, so that's... Someone had a little bit of mercy on me, I guess. Is my um, my water requirement for these should decrease as it's raining. All right, so we have two wells going on, and that should allow us to water the plants quite nicely. I think now the base is under good management, so I'm going to switch back to the other group here. Queen. Let's take a quick look. 
Frenchie's going to be the last to heal. So I'm going to put it to two speed. Hell is fully healed. But the zone hasn't really loaded in yet, so I can't really move people around just yet. There we go. Ron is moments away from being healed. Uh, Queen, I'm going to send to the hub. Actually, Red Rain, I'm going to send to the hub, too, for a different reason. Red Rain needs to just do some running to get better at it. And Queen's going there to buy backpacks from the Shinobi Thieves. Discounted backpacks. Oh, she's being targeted. Uh, she's being targeted by Dust Bandits. She's uh, so close to being in town, I'm not even going to worry about it. She ran partially through that Dust Bandit camp that we partially cleared out. I do plan on clearing out the rest of them once everyone's healed. In fact, everyone can run. All the conscious people can run to the hub. It doesn't hurt to get a little bit of extra um, athletics training. And all the people that are resting can stay put. In my experience, there's barely ever any raiders between Squint and Hub. And if there are, they're... Oh, and they are, are right now. They tend to be uh, just Hungry Bandits or Bone Dogs. Yeah, this is Hungry Bandits. Not an issue. Not going to slow us down. We're going to run right, right by them. Uh, Beep and Thor are almost fully healed. And then Frenchie is the last one to heal. Oh, there is a uh, wolf den, and I'm going to hit that up next. I'm going to go to the wolf den before I clear out the dust bandits, because my group here is uh, honestly getting pretty hungry, and wolves can be butchered up for food, so, you know, it'd be pretty economical not to have to buy my food, but just, you know, butcher it. Loading a new zone. There it is. And we're going to head into the hub. Uh, so, I joined the Shinobi Thieves. Oh, okay. I'm an imposter. Who are you? Slave mongers? Apparently, I have some sort of slave monger clothing on. Who has it? Oh, uh, Ron does. All right. Um, this is a. Not. Oops. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, I don't intend to fight this. I don't have a full group, so I have 7 out of 10. Um, I just paid for another bed rental. Oh, well. I have 7 out of 10, um, and even if I had 10 out of 10, it might not be something I want to do, necessarily. Although, if it's just two people that are pissed off from the group, yeah, I could kill this one guy that's chasing me down. That's, that's a, that's a... No, they're all chasing me now. Alright. It would really help if you all actually moved in the right direction, though. Just saying. You keep stopping. Alright, right now I have them set to everybody run for themselves. Where is Chez? Chez fell behind significantly. Oh, wow. He was in the midst of that group, and they uh, paid him no attention. So this dude is not going to give up. So we are just going to... Uh, we're going to make him pay. Make him bleed. So I guess slave mongers care if you dress like a manhunter. I didn't realize that because they're different factions. But I guess they're associated factions. Hey dude. How you doing Mr. Slaver? Yeah, not well. Uh, in fact, you're a slaver. So I just finished you off. No mercy for the slavers. None whatsoever. Where's Thorns? Uh, Queen, you're supposed to be trading with Thorns. I have no idea where you're headed. Okay, there is some weirdness going on right now. Everybody walk around here. Queen, move to Thorns. Trade. Ah, uh, there we go. Alright, uh, I'm just gonna... 
I could, if it is being annoying, to um, just get rid of Ron's armor, because Ron's armor keeps triggering these imposter uh, effects. Uh, that wouldn't be the worst idea ever. Because at some point it will get annoying. And it, they could they could really be angry about it at a very unopportunistic time. Like when I'm unconscious and they are pissed. Uh, so that might not be a terrible idea. Alright, so Mr. Ron, you have Faction Uniform Manhunters. We're going to ditch that. I will buy you some armor. Uh, this is stolen, but it's not Faction Uniform. And this is stolen, but not faction uniform. Okay. Good. So we solved that. Uh, let's take a look at some of the research that these guys have. So, concrete walls. I'm going to learn everything, but I, I'm not necessarily going to make it just because I learned it. Um, so there we go. That is just about... All of these teeny little uh, blueprints here are really, really cheap. They're not expensive, so... I can buy a bunch of them, and, and it doesn't really hurt the wallet. Benders and Signs is going to be really, really nice for me to own because it will help me to uh, designate certain buildings. All right. And then we're looking for the Shinobi Trader. There he is. Uh, have two backpacks for me and, and pants. I'm going to buy both sets. Queen will wear the Drifter Leather. Uh, Ron, you're going to wear one of these. And Thor, you're going to wear the other one. Or Hela, I guess, because Hela's closer. Silver Shade, you can wear those pants. All right. These pants uh, have okay protection, um, and they don't slow you down. Which is the big thing. Alright, so the big backpacks have to go to the crossbow people. Um, Hella's maybe eventually going to become crossbow person. I'm not sure. But I'm uh, going to carry the big backpack. And then the small backpacks go to the swordsman. So Chez, you're going to take that one. Alright. Now everyone up here is going to rendezvous back down into Squin. And I'm going to shop around for some armor for... Uh, Ron, because he just gave up um, pretty decent armor because it was a faction uniform, and uh, and I'd I'd like for uh, for him to be better armored than nothing, because nothing gets you killed. Another thing we could do, don't feel great about it, but I'm hungry, is to kill these Garu. Garu are pretty tough, but these are pups. But what? All right. Yep. We're just gonna jump the Garu. Sorry, Garu. I feel bad, but I'm hungry. So one was an adult, and we're sort of tag teaming the adult real hard. And the other's the pup, and uh, this will allow us to eat because we were quite low on food. Uh, as you can see, the um, they hit pretty hard. They knocked uh, Hella out. And regardless of the size, uh, it's the same amount of food. Which is a little weird. You'd think the adults would have more. Uh, and then I'm actually going to give Thorns some meat because he'll, he'll be able to eat out of his backpack as well. Alright. We're going to need a little bit more healing now. Uh, so... Red Rain, I guess, got knocked out as well. Let's pick him up. All right, and then I'll just... I'm not going very far, so I can run as a group into Squin. Who's chasing me? Escape Servants. Yeah, this is what running as a group looks like, which is why I generally follow the slowest member, because running as a group sometimes splits them up all sorts of weirdness. Uh, which I don't appreciate, don't like. It's annoying. I'm going to wait for this. Oh, there we go. Zone's loaded. And we're going to hop in bed. And then the next stop is the wolf den. There's a wolf den uh, around here that I spotted earlier. And uh, fight some wolves, potentially, and uh, get some food out of that as well. 
So the queen here, um, before I go into the town fully, uh, she needs to cook some of the meat. She doesn't eat raw meat. Uh, potentially neither does Silvershade, for that matter. Yeah, Silvershade, as you can see, his uh, hunger bar is dropping as well. Uh, the queen and the princes slash princesses uh, refuse to eat the, the raw stuff. So I can leave the meat on the fire over there while I head over and heal. Alright, so Silvershade is going to head back to the campfire and stand by it. And then everyone else is going to hop into bedding and heal up. Yeah, it's I saw an opportunity to make a little bit of food or whatever. And uh, you gotta you gotta jump on those opportunities. I could have left the base with more of my food, I guess. Um, I could have brought a lot of that dried meat. Queen, you're having some pathin issues, aren't you? But uh, yeah, no, we we found some food. All right, silver shade. Let's go carry this uh, dried meat. And as you can see, nutrition will go back up. And Queen will continue to cook. In fact, we're not even going to wait for... We'll just do two batches. Nomad Animal Trainer. Hello. They've got Pack Beast Bone Dogs, Pack Bulls, Wild Bulls. I prefer Wild bull Bulls over Pack Bulls because they're tougher, generally. As you can see, uh, pups at the same age... One has a lot more uh, melee attack. But I'm, I'm not prepared to bring in a whole bunch of animals just yet, so. Although tempting to have a bull. Bulls are very formidable um, fighters in their own right. Uh, I'm going to wait until I have um, a proper base. I'm probably, as long as I'm on the little starter island, I'm not going to take on any more creatures. Um... Until I have a proper farm, uh, like a um, a ranch for them or something like that. All right, so we're just waiting on who is the worst hurt. I guess Hella. She was knocked unconscious. It is nighttime. Uh, I said I was going to, um, hmm. Alright, I'm going to let Hella heal up a little bit more. I am, um, I'm wanting to go fight those dust bandits for more money. And then possibly temporarily wear some of their, uh, clothing. Because Ron got rid of his, uh, imposter causing armor, which was, uh, annoying. Alright, so Hella, I know you're not fully healed up, but, uh, but sadly I'm not going to wait. We are headed back to the bandit camp that we were clearing out earlier, and we're going to finish off the job. Killing the rest of them and taking their stuff. So uh, let's do a quick head count here, see what the numbers are. So it's one... Two, four, six, eight, ten. So it's a perfectly even match. 10 v 10. Before it was like 10 v 26 or something like that. 25. Actually, it says there's 12 of them. Um, okay, so they still outnumber us. But that's fine by me. Queen, and let's slow down time. Silver Shade. Silver Shade needs some more bolts, so we're going to fork them a little bolt bolts. They're going to open fire, and they're going to shoot on this poor guy no mercy no we're just pulling one at a time what is this like world of warcraft uh all right well as soon as i engage combat with this poor guy that's getting 1v10 um the other should probably come pretty soon there we go so here's the full the full cadre of uh of uh dust bandits and this is going to be a good fight. I hope. Alright, 
Looks like Silver Shade, you're gonna need to intervene, maybe. A lot of big green numbers and not too many big red numbers. AKA, we're doing well. Ron is chopping up real good. Even Hella. Everyone's pulling weight here. Oh, Red Rain just bit one of them to down. I'm actually going to pull Red Rain back because he's outnumbered. Uh, let's have Beep and Red Rain. There we go. Now, Hella's unconscious. No surprise, she was wounded already going into the fight. Red Rain's down as well. Now, I like fighting the Dust Bandits because they, generally speaking, don't hit hard enough to cause decapitations or severed limbs or anything like that. They're, they're tough enough early on that you get a good fight out of them. Because if you clean the... If you mop the floor with the enemies, uh, you, you don't get a lot of good training out of it. It doesn't level you up being so much more powerful. Um, so you're looking for good fights that are tough and uh, are, are economically worth it. And there we go. There is the Dust Bandits dispatched. And Queen is going to... Uh, Pick over the loot. Oh, Thor's laying on the ground. I could probably fix that pretty good. Ron, despite the fact they didn't have armor, actually did pretty well. He probably blocked a whole lot of incoming attacks. And we have three doctors doing their medicine. Hell is actually not deeply unconscious. She'll heal up pretty quick. Some of them are getting back up, getting ornery, trying to fight back again. That's cute, but, you know, this, they're dead. I'm sort of, uh, I'm low-key corpse camping here, uh, meaning that I haven't really moved away from the fight, so the likelihood that, uh, that uh, these guys are going to be able to, like, escape and get away is pretty much zero, because I'm sitting on top of them. So anyone that gets back up is just going to go right back down. Oh, this, uh, what are you, at boss? Yeah, you're the boss. Oh, and you have a bounty on your head. And you're alive, so I'm going to first aid you and turn you in live for double the money. Or, rather, full money. If they die, you only get half credit. And, uh, no thanks to that, right? Alright, that bandit went down. Queen is going to pick up the dust boss so he doesn't, you know, squirrel away. Taking a look, that Dust Boss's blade is actually pretty good, so I'm going to give that one to Ron. Ron's going to just dump his old blade, because his old blade is not as good as that thing. Um, let's see. Trade with Red Rain. Making the, uh, the Bone Dogs carry all the, all the stuff. Or most of the stuff, where they're going to run out of capacity, I think, pretty soon. Well, they have pretty good capacity. Don't pick up thorns. I was trying to loot this guy. Who came to and fought us. Alright, so Queen is inventory full. Let's go get that Moon Cleaver. I'm stealing it, but it was already sort of mine. Uh, Silver Shade has some bag space for more stuff. Oh, Hello's back up. Uh, so let's shop around and grab more of their stuff. We, we, we defeated them for the, you know, the training, but also the loot. It wouldn't make much sense to leave all this beautiful loot on the ground behind. Um, looks like I'm going to need to buy some bolts. I 
I'll let you wear that shoddy heart protector. I'm definitely going to aim to buy something a little bit better than that. But maybe at one of the hive villages, so he's in hive uh, hiver armor. Uh, so, taking a quick look in the dark. Oh, yep, there's one more left to be looted here. Possibly two. They're kind of in a big jumble, so it's hard to tell. And then the bolts go to... Uh, let's just pick up the bolts. And then send them to Silver Shade. Where is Silver? Did Silver Shade run off? Where did he go? No. There's, there's just like pathing bugs going on here. Alright, Beep, just drop the bolts then. And Silver Shade will pick them up from the ground. And this will... Because he was almost out of ammo. Uh, although he's turning out to be a pretty decent swordsman, to be honest. Uh, who is left to loot? We're looking for people that are not naked. No, I think we might be... Oh, no, that guy has a sword on his back. There we go. Sometimes the Shek, because of their uh, dark, pigmented, scaly skin, it kind of sometimes looks like they're armored when they're not. Um. Alright, I think we're done. Everyone's going to walk home under their own power. Uh, maybe together though so at the slowest common denominator and that is a full camp wiped out now some of them are gonna survive I didn't finish them off so the ones that aren't fatally bleeding oh uh, no they're pretty much dead oh one's playing dead but the rest of them are uh, are really have no chance of waking back up They've lost too much blood. They're not going to recover. Yeah, when you're when you're wounded, you could potentially spring back, you know. But if you are bleeding out really, really quickly, uh, by the time that you could theoretically regain consciousness, you're going to have lost too much blood. Um, so yeah, you're you're essentially just dead. All right. Uh, right now, the shops are closed because it's six in the morning. Uh, so if we're going to sell stuff, it's going to be have to be the barman. I don't know how much they can actually afford, but we'll see. Uh, four grand worth of stuff. Queen has mercenary armor that she can give to Ron. She doesn't really need merc armor. I'm not really actually even allowing her to get hit. Which means her... I should keep her well protected, honestly, because she is the queen. Um, but yeah, if I'm not really allowing her to get hit, she doesn't maybe need the best top-of-the-line armor. Uh, Alright, before we rest, I'd like to offload all of my goods, my armors. So let's get over to the other bar. And sell some stuff, and then I think it will be daybreak pretty soon, which will open up the shops. Because if these guys don't have enough money, which likely they do not to buy everything, yeah, they're running out of money pretty fast. And I don't even think I've sold anything off the uh, bone dogs yet. Yep, they are out of money. All right. Uh, looks like the shops are open already. So, we were going to look for decent armor for Ron. Um, so let's give Ron Queen's armor back and find some better armor for Ron. So here is the armor trader. So, the rules were stuff that I manufacture myself, uh, I, I can only use when it's, um, Hiver style. But stuff that I buy does not have that same restriction. So I'm looking at the plate jackets. Uh, has really, really good coverage, but it's also very expensive. Uh, let's talk... Oh, this other guy is not a, a vendor. Okay. So that was their whole full selection. Yeah, I think I'm going to buy it from um, a hive trader instead. Uh, but what I should do is go back into that shop and sell this guy all the rest of my crap that I don't need. So one, two... There we go. And everything here... 
Perfect. Wunderbar. Wonderful. Let's stack into this. What is going on? Who's running around? Oh, a bunch of nomads trying to catch up to their uh, caravan, I suppose. Uh, queen is carrying whom? Oh, the bounty. Right. Uh, let's turn the bounty in. So the bounty is going to get turned into the the prison. Uh, Silvershade pick up thorns. Ron pick up red rain. All of you go to the second floor and start to heal. Queen, turn the bounty over for the two grand over to the guard. Done. Two grand. Clearing out the bandit camp. All right, thorns. And, all right, so let's see. Ron, Silvershade, put him in bed. Some of these beds are going to be free because I already paid for them today. Um, actually, a lot of them will be free. Or not free, but, you know, they're already paid for. Alright, so, unsurprisingly, uh, Queen and Silvershade are unharmed, because, you know, they're bow people, and they generally don't get harmed. Uh, I do, would I would like to try to find some more bolts. I know I have a bunch of them manufactured back home, but... Uh, we potentially will find ourselves into some additional fights before we get home. So, uh, let me check the travel trader. Yep, he has some toothpicks that I can use. And we'll check his maps. Tower of Spiders, sure. Lost Library, sure. like how the map is holy map so what I was saying before or maybe well the reason why I'm using the thief backpacks is the encumbrance or rather the um, the effects of these other backpacks like let's say a medium backpack uh, you dodge at half the rate you fight at a 10 uh, 90 percent of the rate you stealth poorly there's a combat skills penalty um, so Really big backpacks have some pretty significant penalties to offset the fact that you're able to carry a lot more. Um, so I like to avoid using them and trying to carry stuff on bone dogs. All right, so let's take a look at what we just uncovered. Uh, a ruin here and the Tower of Spiders here. Tower of Spiders is not somewhere I'm likely to go in the near future. Uh, that place is riddled with unbelievably strong spiders. I think in my first Kenshi series... That might have been the closest I came to death. Spoiler, spoiler. Yeah. I think I entered the Tower of Spiders ill-prepared, uh, not realizing that they were spoilers again, full of elder blood spiders that hit like... like... dump trucks and uh, rip you apart and try to eat you alive. And I think of the... 70 or so hours of the last Kenshi series. So if you're hankering for more content, you could watch my Kenshi Iron Man series. Uh, if you're of the 70, I think, two, five hours of that series, that was one of the closest I came to a full wipe in an Iron Man series. This, too, is Iron Man. I'm not safe scumming. I will admit that uh, occasionally my game does crash. So although I'm not safe scumming, I do crash every now and then and have to restart the recording. Uh, crashing because Kenshi crashes. That's just the way it is. If that bothers you, don't play it. Uh, there's a lot of ways to avoid crashing, especially if you're playing on your own. So auto-saving, because when you're not recording, you can just load from the last auto-save and it's less interruptive. For me, I have to get a good hour of no crashing in. So that can be more challenging. And then other ways is to lower your graphics, install the compressed textures pack, Pause whenever you see the loading screen. Uh, don't jump between zones that often. Lower your graphic settings. Have a powerful computer. Uh, pray to the Elder Gods. I don't know. Just... Alright. We're going to check in on the Shinobi Thieves again. Um, see if there's any other Shinobi backpacks that I should acquire. Plus, uh, there might be armor here. I'm not dead set at, at wearing Hiver armor uh, yet. Right now, as it is, I'm allowed to wear anything as long as I purchase it. And if I manufacture it, it has to be Hiver. Um, where is the trader here? 
I like how that guy's just like standing on the top of the tower. That is cinematic. The trader wears a backpack. Oh, you're right out front. Jesus. Okay. Uh, a bunch of new backpacks. I'll buy them all. Expensive, but uh, they pay for themselves. Now, a lot of the backpacks I just bought are better for crossbow than for um, melee. The small ones have no uh, penalties to combat. The medium ones have a teeny bit of a skill combat penalty. Now, there is a reason to have penalties, however. So, let's say you are trying to become a better uh, swordsman. If you wear a lot of armor that makes your combat skill reduce. So, let's uh, I'll put it in numbers. Let's say you have a melee attack of um, 30. And you wear armor that lowers your your melee combat skills down to 20. When you're fighting, you are training as if you are a level 20. Which is to say, it's easier to level up lower levels. Um, so, if you really want to train well... And this works even better for um, stuff like martial arts or whatever. Um, if you want to train really effectively, you would actually purposely wear armor that, that hurts the skill that you're trying to train. Uh, and that way you train at a lower level. So, for instance, with Queen here, she has an athletics of 75. That means for her to get from 75 to 76 is hard. Getting from 1 to 2 is easy. So, not that armor exists that reduces your athletic skill by 70, but if I could wear it, I could very easily get myself up to maximum athletics training really, really, really quickly. Uh, obviously, it's not that effective, but there is a lot of armor that does hurt. So, for instance, uh, her mercenary leather armor hurts crossbow skill and martial arts. So, if I wanted to train crossbows, which she is currently using... Um, actually, that's crossbow effects. That's a little bit different. In fact, uh, the armor that she's wearing is making her shoot uh, a little slower, um, which is not good, because considering that's pretty much all she does in a fight which means I really need to get rid of this mercenary leather armor that's on her. Um, yeah. But uh, taking a look at this armor, if I wanted to build stealth skill or uh, martial arts, uh, this would be okay armor to wear. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. And that's the way that works. Alright, so people that need backpacks. Uh, Thor, no? Everyone else has small backpacks. That is phenomenal. Uh, so Hela needs to ditch her small backpack, or big backpack for a small one. Although she might become a crossbowman, as I said. And then these other larger backpacks can go back home to the uh, to home crew and uh, help them out. Some of these bolts are going to go to Silvershade. Let's send them uh, a few small stacks of bolts. How's everyone sealing? Still a little splinted. So we might not want to leave just... Yeah, yeah, um, hmm. Yeah, I think we're fine. I think we're ready to go. So, let's go ahead and pick these guys up. Because they can't really leave the bed on their own power. Strange, but that's just the way it works. Have everyone head on out of... Squin, and what I'm planning on doing is, how much food do we have? We did kill those Garu, so we're okay for food for now. Um, what we're going to do is march back home, but try to... Oh, yeah, you can back check me, that's fine. March back home, but we're going to hit up uh, as many uh, high villages as we can on the way home. So that we can buy uh, Hiver Tech books. Uh, that's the plan, at least. Alright, Queen, let's ditch that armor to Ron so that you shoot faster. And I'm going to see if there's any other armor I'm currently wearing that hurts. So if I was trying to build up um, stealth skills, I would definitely not want to wear the ninja mask that makes me uh, stealthier because it hurts my stealth skills. So if I look at stealth here... Um, 
uh, my stealth is more effective. Uh, maybe stealth is a bad example, but yeah, the mercenary armor example is prime example of that. Or melee defense bonus. So if I was trying to build up my melee defense, having a heart protector that adds defense bonus increases my skill to it. So if we take a look, um, I have a melee defense on beep of 13. And if I take off the armor, right, so right now it's, um, it's, it's, I have plus to six because of my equipment. So I have uh, four on the horse chopper and two on the heart plate. So right now I have an effective melee defense of 19, but it really is 13. So when I'm trying to level up to 14, leveling up to 14 is if I'm leveling from 19 to 20, which is harder to do. It's a, a sort of a exponential curve of how difficult it becomes to level up melee skills. So in other words, um, Beep is going to level up sort of more slowly uh, than, than what would otherwise be necessary. Uh, green, when you have nothing left to do, let's haul the water tank. Store all our beautiful water in the uh, in water storage. All right, so we have plenty of water for these farms now. That is no longer an issue, which is makes me very very happy because uh, we had we had some of these farms um, totally dry out, which is dumb. Totally totally dumb and irresponsible of me. Uh, so as soon as we start to get a harvest on this vegetable farm where we have green fruit built up, we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to, uh, expand this green fruit farm and then make green fruit sandwiches out of it. All right, let's switch back to queen. We're falling red rain. Red rain's getting the opportunity to finally build up some athletic skill. Now we are in, um, beak thing territory, so I got to be careful where I'm walking. Uh, so I definitely don't want to walk into a bee thing. It wouldn't also be terrible to loot some big things because I wouldn't mind one more hive hut. I could definitely, uh, go for some crafting huts, uh, to make, uh, hiver armor, hiver weapons. Or rather, pole arms and hiver armor. Additionally, uh, there will eventually be the ability to dye my armor, uh, certain colors. And I have to sort of decide what color scheme. I was sort of floating the idea that I should match the terrain, which is to say purpley blue or something like that. Um, and also the queen is blue. So maybe blue makes the most sense because the queen is blue and everyone else should match the queen. Normally they are sort of that buggy yellow color. But uh, in respect to the queen, yeah, I, I would say blue is probably the right color. The sort of purpley blue that the queen is is perfect. All right, so the guards here are almost certainly fighting big things up here. Yep, they are. And that means that there are some big things I can clean up for their uh, their guts at the end of their fighting. Which is good. That will allow me to uh, build some more houses, build the crafter hut that I was referring to. All right, here we are. We're looking for the prince. There he is. He has got... I can't even afford that. He's got a whole lot of Hiver notebooks. Good. Plated drifter leather pants. Hive leather vest. Uh, that's really tempting to buy, but I think I'd rather wait because um, I'll have the ability to unlock... Uh, I'm not a human. The ability to unlock um, some Hive-based armor at the end of this. Oh, this is a real beak fight, huh? There's got to be a nest nearby or something. Because, I here's the nest. If I wanted oodles and oodles and oodles of cash, I could take those, uh... I could take those nest eggs, but, um... As I said previously, I really don't feel comfortable being a gazillionaire immediately. That, um... That sort of ruins the game. But taking some meat and leathers off of, uh... A dead beak thing? That, that, however, is not that much of a problem. Oh! Oh, interesting. So I'm actually fighting a beak thing here. Alright, I will fight you. I gotta pay my dues, right? So I'm gonna have, um, Ron block and taunt. Turning on block, your melee defense goes up. 
a bunch. Oh, Beep just got knocked unconscious. So Ron's melee defense is actually pretty significant. It's 47. That's, uh, that's into the respectable zone. Um, yeah, actually, let's have everyone, all hands on deck, fight this. So the thing is, anytime the big thing attacks, it splashes around. So that's why, as you see, Frenchie and Chez, they're getting ruined. But uh, Ron defended the whole time, never got hit. So that's awesome. And I'm now going to render aid to all of them. And to loot this uh, big thing and shove the, the loot into a backpack. Yeah, so I can take on one big thing, but mostly I can take them on because um, uh, because I have attack slot three and allows three of my people to attack one of theirs. So it wasn't exactly the fairest of fights. Uh, Queen, uh, Red Rain, and uh, Thorns is going to go up here and loot some more of these big things before they uh, regain consciousness. And this will enable us to construct some high futs. Oh, come on. Thorns is standing right there. Don't give me that out of range baloney. You know it's baloney as well as I do. All right. I really don't want to be next to a beak thing when it regains consciousness, so it's important that I, um, I kill them off pronto. Really? Out of range? I'm standing on top of it. All right, thorns. All right, now Red Rain has to be the one to, to bear the rest of this burden. Thorns, you're going to rendezvous with the rest of the group. Red Rain Queen over here. All right, this one is regaining consciousness. Oh, Jesus. That's what I didn't want to have happen. Everyone else wants to help, but I'd rather just have the uh, the Western Hive do this heavy lifting. I've already paid my dues and uh, bled pretty hard from it. Come on, Western Hive. All right, Queen Silvershade, stand apart and start shooting. All right, here comes the Western Hive. They're better equipped and more skilled to deal with uh, this sort of thing, which is why I wanted them to do it. Now, there is going to be some big things up top that are going to regain consciousness. What I think I'm going to do is run around and loot with Queen one leather off of each of them to finish them off because I have, uh, like, 20 seconds before this one regains consciousness. Actually, there's an unconscious drone up here, too. All right, one leather. One leather. And this ensures that they are dead. Once you loot any sort of animal-based material off of them, they uh, they perish. All right, so Red Rain, you got to get up here now. Or actually, no, Red Rain, you're in the perfect spot. You're standing next to the beak thing that is first to be looted. Beep just regained consciousness. He regains consciousness and just says, beep. Like, beep back online, sort of. All right, let's loot these guys. This was a... Uh, profitable find and then additionally i'm going to be able to sell uh maybe i won't sell anything maybe i'll keep the uh the leathers because the leathers are going to be useful in uh manufacturing armor too all right so that one was fully looted Now, there's the other worry of it's possible that these, um, every now and then what will happen is when you kill beak things, like, they'll die in such a way where they stack on top of one another and you can't really see the ones underneath, uh, which would be not bueno. But that's a lot of materials now. I think what I'm going to do is steal one egg. I, uh, I took out one beak thing by myself, and I think I'm entitled to one egg, not the rest of them. You know, if, if if at some point I clear a nest myself, I will, um, I'll award myself, no, don't splint rig, come on, I'm telling you to take an egg. Uh, I'll award myself the whole nest, but until I'm, 
you know, I didn't earn this, so I'm not taking it. I will steal the, the weapons around it, though, because, you know, that's just salvage. And it's not worth much anyway. Oh, beep grabbed it. Cool. I think Queen was um, splinting. All right, so these sabers... The ring saber is actually pretty good. I'm going to hand that one to Ron. Have him use it. And then hand this over to someone else. Uh, this is the same quality as Beeps. So maybe hand it to... Frenchy. And then the queen's going to get rid of this really god-awful Wakasashi. So Frenchy has a proper blade now. Um... Alright, so Chez is the only one that has a significant leg wound, slowing him down a lot. Uh, we will go sell our one egg, pick him up, and head to the next high village. Uh, where is Ye Prince? Quit calling me human, dude. Uh, pole arms. I already know that research. Alright, I will buy uh, the iron plates. And I'm going to leave the regular research books because I'm interested in the Hiver research for right now. Let's trade the plates to thorns so I'm not encumbered. Ooh, no, I'm not trading the thorns. I'm trading them to, uh, to Red Rain. Thorns already is pretty much full. All right, cool. Uh, Chez, you're the two miles an hour? Yeah, we're not waiting for you, dude. No offense, you gave your leg to the big thing, but... Uh, taking a quick look, Frenchy and Thor are both at 21, but Red Rain's at 19, so Red Rain is the slowest. Uh, let's go to the next high village. And we're going to ping pong between high villages here. Um, oh, one of the guards lost an arm. And that is exactly why they... Oh, what's chasing me? Ah, uh, no. Don't like... A healthy, unharmed beak thing is chasing me. Uh, that's why the Hivers manufacture prosthetics, or robotics, because presumably uh, they're constantly losing limbs to beak things. As soon as I get to this next high village, um, they will leave me alone. So what I'm going to do is have everyone sprint for themselves, and that way they're not all grouped up. But this thing, as you can see, as long as you dodge the wind-up attack, uh, you don't really get hit. You just have to be ready to dodge it. And generally speaking... Uh-oh. There we go. Generally speaking, running at 20-ish miles an hour... Uh, okay, so it hit Red Rain because Red Rain just happened to be moving into the attack as the attack dropped. So as long as we're not super grouped up on one another, it's okay. Fortunately, Red Rain, um, yeah, see, doesn't hit. Uh, Bone Dogs, uh, don't slow down when they have one injured leg. So this one is just trying to beat Thor up. I'm just sort of watching it. Could you piss off, dude? God, I hate beat things. I cannot wait for the day where I'm uh, truly able to just murder them outright. Pole arms will be really, really useful in that. Uh, part of the reason I suspect that uh, hives use pole arms is because pole arms are are particularly effective against uh, be up against animals, against beasts. So they have a a rather large bonus to killing beasts. Thor's doing a really good job of just kiting this thing. Although he has the potential of, of course, um, uh, having significant ling limb injuries. Silver Shade, what's... Oh, are you coming back to help Thor? Thor, I figured I would just dip into this uh, building here. They're going to... Oh, they're... Okay, he ignored it. Let's go inside the trader here. They might scream at me and call me Hiveless and then uh, not trade with me until I leave town again. But that's a small price to pay to not get eaten by a beak thing. And this beak thing is being swarmed by the Western Hive. As you can see, this is a really good way to sort of gauge 
how difficult it's going to be to attack the Western Hive. They've got uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of guards, all at about 50-60 attack. Um, not to be taken lightly. This is a this is a real fight and a tough fight. So let's grab the meat and leathers of this big thing. Let's shove them on rain and see if I haven't pissed off the trader over here. So sometimes what happens is when they see um, hiveless, they won't. Yeah, they won't trade. He's currently refusing to trade. Uh, they don't see the queen as hiveless. So if I send everyone else out of town, uh, everyone but... Oh, you know what? She's carrying Chez. I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not, but uh, I can have her put Chez down. And then I'll return and, and try to buy the hiver uh, armor. So the thing is, if I'm eventually going to go to war with the uh, Western Hive, I need to make sure that I have all of the Hive research I need from them before I uh, go to war. Because if I go to war too early, of course, uh, you know, I won't be able to afford, or I won't have any way to buy Hive tech. And that would be foolish, capital F foolish. Alright, uh, hello Prince. He somehow doesn't notice that I'm not also a hiver, but that's fine. Uh, I'm taking a look. No, they don't have any clothing I want to buy. Um, I might buy the traditional research books. Because I also have a, a lot of regular research I want done. All right, Queen Rendezvous with everyone else. Everyone follow Red Rain. Red Rain, you're going to walk to the last high village. Uh, actually, you know what? Walk to this one. Because we don't have a lot of money. We could sell a whole lot of the animal skins if we needed the money, though. But we don't have a lot of money, so we might as well start walking home. It's been uh, it's been a long journey so far, so... It's time to get back. Time to research. Time to heal up. Uh, time to maybe start crafting Hiver armor. That would be cool. And Oboro has volunteered to be one of our crafters. If you are a patron of mine, and I guess I'll ask the patrons directly, but I'll ask on camera as well. If you're a patron of mine and you want to be a weaponsmith, uh, let me know. Because I have a volunteer for armor smithing, or for any sort of smithing, but I think I'm going to start with armor. But I'm going to need a weaponsmith. Alright, so these are a bunch of scrawny cannibals. Uh, we'll outrun them, so I'm not that worried. And I have uh, plenty, plenty of resources to build more hive huts uh, from looting all those big things. Basically, it, it changes a little bit when you consume the raw meat, but uh, the rule of thumb is one big thing is one hive hut. But because some of the raw meat that we obtained from killing the big things means that it's not exactly a one-to-one -one ratio, but normally it would be. So if... Um, if, let's say, the queen had capacity to carry all of that meat herself, because she doesn't eat raw meat or foul meat, uh, if the queen or Silvershade or one of the other princes did all of the looting of the big things, uh, you know, the, the sum of what you get from a big thing allows you to build one hive hut. And that is by the mod's design. That's In vanilla uh, Kenshi, you obviously can't make um, hive huts. But in um, but uh, the mod has it so that you make the huts out of beak thing parts, because basically they're the arch nemesis of the hive. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is take five of the leathers because again we ate some of the raw meat, so I don't the last of that leather is not gonna be useful to me, and we are going to sell it to this hive trader and then buy out his hive research. And then the last few dollars I have pay for research. This is a queen that highly appreciates uh, knowledge. Right? Knowledge is power. And now the run up the coast, avoiding the fog islands. But I'm out of time, everyone. So if you have any feedback for me, drop me a line. 
if you have any questions about this series, about Kenshi in general, you can let me know. The forums that I have on Discord for Kenshi are also pretty active, and there's a lot of knowledgeable people that can answer your questions. If you're interested in that, all you got to do is uh, rodamont.com and click the Discord button. Additionally, my full release schedule's on there, so if you are hankering for more content from me, all you got to do is check out any of my other series, and if they interest you, follow along. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for all your support. I'll catch you all next time. Adios.